Your Royal Highness, Crown Princess Victoria, former President, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be here today to exchange views and experiences on this very important region that is also so crucial to the future of our planet. For the Nordic countries, the Arctic is an integral part of their geography, territory, culture and identity. It is therefore not surprising that Nordic countries have individually and collectively been at the forefront on focusing on the Arctic, its environment and sustainability for the last decades. Global warming has profound effects not only the landscape and climate of the Arctic, but also on people and communities and their way of life. Ancient cultures and traditions are at risk at gradually disappearing. The rapid changes in the Arctic mean that the region is already under pressure, both in an environmental and socio-economic sense. But as change is inevitable in the Arctic, we must ensure that it is also for the Arctic and by the people of Arctic, as we just heard. While we speak about warming, they live it. More attention needs to be given to making sure that the voices and views of the indigenous and local communities are heard. Empowerment and capacity building among the local stakeholders are thus key. As part of this effort, the Nordic Council of Ministers have since 1996 supported and initiated hundreds of projects and research initiatives aimed at enhancing our knowledge on the Arctic. In recent years, increased emphasis has been on supporting projects that focus on improving living conditions in the Arctic, not least when it comes to indigenous people and local communities. These projects, for example, focus on teachers' education in the Arctic, utilize the local and indigenous knowledge on research, and build capacity among indigenous youth in the Arctic so that they can take full opportunities in their own home region. Focus of our work is on how the communities can be more adaptable to changes in the region. The projects support policy making and implementation on the local, regional and national and international level. Through a collective effort of our scientific and research communities, we know, now have a better understanding than ever before of the changes in the Arctic and our role in them. With this knowledge, there is no excuse for not acting. Doing nothing is not an option. The most pressing issue is, of course, climate change. We have the framework of Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. These documents make our mission and goals clearer than ever. Technological changes and breakthroughs are increasingly within reach. We know what has to be done. The Nordic countries have committed themselves to, to, to go towards carbon neutrality in the coming decades. The new vision for the Nordic Council of Ministers is to become the most sustainable and integrated region of the world in 2030. That will guide our work in the coming decade. It is time to deliver for us, for governments, civil society, and not least the corporate world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by again underlining the need to involve those in the front line that are now facing the challenges of climate warming in the far north and make sure that their voices are heard and concerns are met. In the so-called race for the Arctic, there must be one winner, the people in the region. If not, we will all lose.